right to still use explicit violence in your writings? It's what I do, is one answer. I write horror fiction. There is a kind of curiosity that we have as human beings about our life processes. One of our last life processes is death. It's a legitimate subject for curiosity. We shouldn't be ashamed that the macabre or the morbid exercises some fascination upon us. I tell it like it is. If it's there in my mind's eye, I put it on the page. And that seems to me to be a legitimate way to write. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Written in Red podcast. That is the horror reader and writer's podcast. Uh, it's just magnificent to have everyone here, you know, all side by side, digital uh, squares smushed together, um, joy on our faces, happiness in our pants. This is going to be a tremendous episode. <laughs> I feel it in my my subcockles. That's how uh, excited I am. Yeah, it's yeah. it's in my loins. It's in my loins. Yeah, yeah. A yeah. subcockle. Yeah. A co- I don't know. I think that was on. Uh, that was on. Like a uh, digital centipede. No, what was it? Uh, <laughs> I'm an asshole by fucking that Dennis O'Leary, right? The oh, the cockles of yeah, your yeah, heart. Yeah, it was Dennis O'Leary. Yeah. No, that was. Cockles. Yeah. It's not O'Leary, yeah. it's Dennis Leary, you fuckface. Whatever the fuck his name is. <laughs> I'm an asshole. You know uh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to get taken off YouTube and start singing. Yo, that's Dennis right. Dennis McLeary? You said Dennis yeah. McLeary? Yeah, M- <laughs> McGillicuddy, McGrady, whatever. Uh, Denny McDonald. All right, what the fuck? This is supposed to be the opening of a show, guys. Yeah. Introduce <laughs> yourself, Aaron Bureau, Bureau Guard. Uh, Take before, this shit seriously. Before we introduce ourselves, I'd like to preface with uh letting people know that we appreciate you checking out the show on youtube if you're not there is a video stream there uh please subscribe if if you're into this kind of shit um (laughs) also uh spotify itunes you can subscribe there as well for the audio feed you know instead of thinking about driving your car into a fucking breakdown wall on the while you're on the highway just dreading every day that you wake up you could think about Listening to that written in red podcast right there. Yeah, we, you know? we are here for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, but uh, all right. All right. Yeah, let's do the, let's do the intro. Can we're going to fucking interview, please. <laughs> okay. intro. We're, all right. We're going to be talking about networking today, how not to be a piece of shit, um, and, and, and networking <laughs> with other notes. people. Yeah. I mean, we had like five episodes about how not to be a piece of shit. It's yeah, a, it's but a, we see it every day. Yeah. We spend a lot of time on like, eating pieces of shit. It seems yeah. to be a subject we know well. Listen, I, I eat pieces of shit for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> Fucking shit him Gavin. Right. And then All also right. we've got a tremendous author spotlight with the very talented Mike Duke. So Duke. Bef- but before we get rolling here, uh, let's go ahead and do our little introductions for those that are new to the show. I'm Aaron Beauregard, the three-time Splatterpunk Award-nominated horror author. Again, I got uh, All Smiles is my most recent book, but Nightmare Nirvana is on the horizon. And uh, yeah, I got like fucking 16 books. Check them out. Daniel? <laughs> Uh, Daniel J. Volpe, Spider-Punk uh, Award-dominated author of Left to You and Talia. My new book, Only Psychos, should be out when this airs, roughly. Um, if you like isolation, crazy, batshit mutant people, and uh, some wild-ass scenes, you're going to want to check this one out. Uh, audiobooks out as well for uh, Gift of Death, my vampire novella, and Billy Silver. So if you like audiobooks, check them out. Raw Dog, Roland Burst Jr. Hello, everybody. Riddle Mercy Jr., author of Unbortion, uh, winner of the 2020 American Book Awards, and finalist in the 2019 International Book Awards. Um, also, um, author of Payback is a Witch, uh, my witchy witch um, splatter punk novella, and also PTSD. Uh, a couple other things coming out in the near future Carver Pike. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, I love you. What the Jesus fuck? Fucking Christ, Christ, man. I love you. My intro. Fuck! <laughs> I love oh my you. God. I love you guys, too. I love, love you, Aaron. Love you. I love you, Dave. 
I love you. Hi. Do your intro. Do your fucking intro. <laughs> Two times. Water Punk Award nominated author. Um, Faces of Beth is my newest book coming out soon. I don't have a release date yet, though, on that. The... My last book that I published was The Maddening, which is the fifth and final book in the Diablo Snuff series. That's the one nominated for uh, this coming up Splatterpunk Awards. And, uh, yeah, check out the rest of the Diablo Snuff series, man. Nice. I love you. <laughs> this is getting all right. Olive, olive juice. Olive. Yes. <laughs> all right, guys. Let's think about it. It's time, right? It's, um, what is it? It's, uh... Uh, author spotlight, author spotlight. Mike Duke, um, yes. excellent author, and uh, Roland. People, the people want more Roland, so let's have him do another author spotlight. What the fuck? Fuck it, you know. All right, so uh, let's see. Mike Duke. Um, if you haven't read him, check him out. He's got a uh, lot of stuff on, um, on Amazon. Uh, the few the books I've read from him. Uh, one is Warm Dark Places, which is just creepy as fuck and it's gonna have your skin crawling uh that's all i can say i can't tell you a lot about it because if i tell you what it's about you're gonna uh, it's gonna ruin it for you but i read it and i was like okay yeah i'm not gonna sleep um with the lights off for a couple of days and i'm gonna check my uh underneath my sheet and my spray to see if there's anything under there trying to get inside of me um (laughs) yeah that's enough to go (laughs) on I'm sorry. 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 i am sorry 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 gods what's the name of it daniel help me for the god sleep is that what it is yes. those lines? i have that um it is on my tv red pile and i'm excited to check it out so if you haven't checked out any of my stuff do yourself a favor go to amazon buy something right now um daniel didn't you read something recently for mike yeah i read his uh space horn uh novel amalgam and book two actually by the time this comes out it'll probably be out for a month Book two of that just came out, and that is called – I just had it up um, – Amalgam Book Two, Retrieval. Um, Mike's covers – first of all, the stories are amazing. If you guys like sci-fi and horror, definitely, definitely check Amalgam out. It's really excellent. It, it has kind of that alien kind of feel to it. It's it's almost like reading a movie, like the way he writes, and it, it's very seamless. You don't realize that you're even reading a book. Um, I could definitely see this book being picked up as as a movie for sure. Uh, characters are great. The monster is amazing. And as you guys can see on the cover, which the cover is absolutely stunning. I think it's one of the oh, better yeah. covers I've seen. Um, really, really high quality. You can tell that Mike puts a lot of work and pride into his his books. And on a personal note, I've had some you know really, really nice in-depth chats with him about writing, about some other personal things. You know, Mike is just a great guy to talk with, and, um, you know, he's, he's an excellent writer. So I actually have book two on the way right now. So I'm looking forward to picking up more of his stuff. Uh, I just want to know if Carver is going to sue him for using Warm Dark Places, which was actually Carver's nickname in college. So uh, I wasn't sure. But uh, we'll have to talk to the attorneys on that. So. Car- Carver, uh, have you got anything about Mike do? Yeah. Uh, I've read, um, I could say that I've read probably about half of Crawl, and I need to go back to it. I was, it's actually on my Kindle reading it. I don't know what happened. I got interrupted or something. And that's one of the things I hate about Kindle is as books keep getting put onto your Kindle and loaded, you know, it's kind of like a carousel. They just keep getting bumped and move over, moved over. And if you don't remember to go back and find the books you were reading, they just get buried. So, I, I was enjoying it. There was no reason that I stopped reading it, so I want to go back and finish it. And uh, that cover, I can't remember the title, the one you were, the space one you were just talking Malibu. about, the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's probably one of my favorite covers that I've seen in the last couple of years, probably. That cover is badass, man. You like, I would put that on my wall and yeah. frame it. I mean, that's a pretty cool poster, man. Oh, yeah. You put a lot of work into it. 
Hey Daniel, the yeah. monster in um, Amalgam is it like a, almost like a thing from John Carpenter's monster, or is there something else altogether? Uh, I but don't really want to. Too much away. Um, yeah, kind of like that. It's more of like a blob monster, I guess you'd say. But uh, the, the introduction of it is amazing, and Mike writes really, really amazing kill scenes. Okay. So, like, you know, this monster. It's it's really a cool thing, and the kill scenes with this thing are, are amazing. So it, it really is a cool, a really cool story. Even if you're not a science fiction person, even if you're just more of a horror person, you're yeah. definitely gonna want to check it out. I don't know, Carver did who fucking Houdini trick. He's gone. Yeah, I'm looking. Yeah. I, that cover does look really cool, and I, I haven't had any um, direct interactions with Mike, but I always hear great things. I always see. Um, also, one thing that I tend to co-sign on a writer for and. You know, if I see my, readers who enjoy my work also reading and sharing his work, then, yeah. you know, I sort of just assume that, you know, he's probably something that I would enjoy and recommend. Oh. So um, and I see a lot of people in support of him and uh, seems like a cool dude. So glad yeah. to he's also going to be at the author con uh, scares that care author con, which when this comes out, we're going to be getting close. So, um, you know, Mike will be there. He's going to have some books, I'm sure, to sign and sell. So. Get ready to check this shit out. I'm going to get to meet Mike Duke. You are going to get to meet Mike Duke. That's I am going to fangirl. I am going to so fangirl. <laughs> uh, no, I'm going to bring my copy of Amalgam with me to, to get him to sign it because I don't have a signed copy of that. And actually, oh no, it went back up. For a while, Amalgam was only like $4 uh, in paperback on Amazon because there was what? some fucking glitch. Yeah, it's it's back up to eleven ninety nine. But okay. he told he said he was still getting paid on the royalties based on – uh, eleven ninety nine, but for some reason it got bumped down on Amazon to like the cost price or whatever. Wow! So, so I was lucky and I snagged it at like four ninety nine. Perfect. Oh, you're like my mom with the with the fucking coupons, like ready to <laughs> do it, <laughs> clipping them. <laughs> fucking. Oh, that's awesome. All right, well, Mike, uh, check him out. You know, and like yeah. we said, a lot his work's affordable. And also, you know, think of it this way, too. When you try a new author, it's if you do it on Kindle, usually it's like a cup of coffee. You know what I mean? It's not too big of a hit. Yeah. Give them a try. See what you think. You know, I, if you, especially if you like some of the other recommendations that we made on the podcast uh, thus far, you know. Yeah. And um, hopefully we'll see, be able to say hi at uh, Scares the Care. So nice. sounds sounds good. But I guess now it's time to get into the uh, main topic, networking, right? This is finding a way to become a, a part of the horror machine, the horror community, as we call it. Um, so let's just kick it off. Um, I think what the first thing I'd like to talk about, you know, is like a general definition of networking and, and why it's important. And to me, networking is sort of... Um, building a web you know of uh various people that you can align yourself in, align yourself with and you you may already rely on them for certain activities or tasks right um yeah. you know it could be anything from cover creation to editing um and then there's other people that might just be you know you just might be uh peers with you know and have the occasional conversation and um you know who knows? Maybe you don't. Maybe it's just a, a relationship early on, sort of a, a high level friendship. Uh, but then you never know. Maybe you end up working with them. Maybe you um, maybe you hear of a certain project from them. Like, for example, let's take the four of us just for example. Right. Like we're a small network. Obviously, we're piped into a bigger network of other people that, you know, we we appreciate and we try to prop up and, um, you know, we all sort of work together, but on a more granular level, the four of us, you know, we have our chat where we sort of talk about the show and things that might be good for the show. And we, every, we talk about everything. Daniel, the other day in the chat, put uh, bubble mailers, you know, like finding a good price on bubble mailers for our, the things we send out. It could be stuff that's story related. You know, if somebody's like, Oh, you know, I just need an opinion on this, guys. It's good to have people to bounce ideas off of that are in the community, right? So you, so you want to have a network. And it, it's important, I think, on a few different levels. One, because you want to kind of 
like I, like I just said, right? Like you really want to have people to bounce stuff off of, um, yeah. because we don't know everything, but maybe, maybe together we sort of have a, have a better idea. Like there's certain things that Carver's done that I haven't done and, and vice versa, but all that knowledge, um, you almost have, you know, one semi-intelligent being with the four of us together, <laughs> I would say. Yeah. <laughs> it's questionable. You know? <laughs> Definitely questionable. Well, what, what do you guys think? What is networking to you, and uh, why is it important? Can we start with Roland? What's it? Why oh, put me on the spot. Uh, <laughs> you know, when you said networking for, for me, it's not just oh, not not only people that are writers or other writers. For me, it's the other people that I interact with on Facebook, mm-hmm. um, the readers. Um, so that's networking for me. That's what I think of when I think of networking. Um, I, I'm, I don't know what else to say about it. I think, I think you, you, but I mean, you network with like people like Candace too, right? And like, oh, yeah. like if you think yeah. about like Mort Stone, you have communications with people like that. Oh, um, and it's like, okay, I'll give you an example of like networking. Uh, when me and Daniel were kind of in a crunch to get so sorry out. Um, mm. I needed an editor and I needed an editor fast. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, I was, I, I'd never used Candace before. Um, I'd use someone else, but I, it, what the timeline wasn't going to work out. So it's like, I'm like, you know what, this is the time when I need to leverage my network. Um, yeah. you know, and then there you go. She did a good job with the book and it's like, now we know we have another reliable person in the network. You know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Networking to me is building meaningful relationships. You know, you're building those meaningful yeah. relationships with people that are in the same mindset and mind frame as you are. So even if they're readers, you know, yeah. and they're not an author, but they're still in that horror community. They're great people for the most part to talk to. And it, it is awesome to have somebody, you know, in your network that you can reach out to that is an avid reader and say, hey, listen, I'm having trouble with this chapter. Can you just read it for me and give me some feedback and let me know from a reader's perspective, what do you think about it? You know, and I, and we call I mean, I know we, we beat this with a dead horse, but like, or beat, beat a dead horse, beat a dead horse with a dead stick, whatever the fuck it is. Beat off a dead um, horse. Is that what you said? Beat off a dead horse with both hands. I think that's what it was. Um, the carver is so, in, he's so, in, he's just thinking about gathering all that bull semen. Yeah. But we talk about this. I don't even know what the fuck's going on. There's horse dicks everywhere. Uh, but, uh. <laughs> But having those people in your in your inner circle that you can reach out to, and this goes oh, this is what I was gonna say. Don't be a fucking asshole. If you're not an asshole, you'll be able to build these meaningful relationships with people, and yeah. have people that you can reach out to around the world, pretty much, and say, can you take yeah. a look at this um, this writing? I'm not gonna say take a look at this because I don't want to put rolling on the spot and sending us stuff. Um, <laughs> but having those people as meaningful relationships, it's it's important. That's what networking is about. And then those people that you network with actually become friends. So, like Candace and I are great friends, and so oh, Martin and I also. Um, so not only do you have the benefit of somebody who can help you or in a, in, in a tough spot or somebody you can turn to to ask for uh, advice, but you also have eventually maybe somebody that you can turn to for personal stuff. Yeah, and you more, have that kind of connection with them. And Mort and Candace are now working together. Yeah. How cool is so, that? Okay. You know? yeah. Again, a, a networking thing that you know came together, and now they're they're working on projects. So yeah. it's, it's great. Well, the, great and the funny part about that too, it's like Mort. I knew separately, like before he even knew Candace, and then you know, I Candace I knew separately, and it's just cool to see the community. Really, that's community, right? Like when everyone is is connected in that in that network, you know. So it's like yeah. Uh, it, and it's like it's just a testament to how um, professional and friendly a lot of these people are, you know. Oh yeah. Um, so it's really cool. Yeah, and for us as indie authors and any authors, really, you have to have some kind of network to build your brand. We've talked about that. You'll hear us talk about building brands constantly on this show because it is important. You know, if you want to be branded as the the person that's ignores their readers or they don't answer private messages that's fine some people are very very private and are still great writers they still sell a lot of books um for the most part the four of us you know we get private messages from people and i try to answer everyone i try to have a personal conversation with people 
you know, yeah, we do get some weirdos, although Roland does not have enough weirdos. So if you're a fucking weirdo, please um, <laughs> RolandMercyJr.com. Why, why uh, is the weirdos always coming to me? What about Carver? Carver you're not, you get, like you're not getting enough weirdos. Carver gets his own Car- weirdos. Carver's what? I don't, I don't. What? What? The weirdos. <laughs> Send the weirdos and the dick to Roland, remember? <laughs> 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 But the networking is important for us, you know, getting out there, meeting people, yeah. you know, and how you want to be identified and building that building that relationship with people and forming that that, you know, that network of people that you can talk with. And you yeah. know what? The actual networking is a job and it's in and of itself. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, like even with the, the readers, I feel like I have to answer every last comment or mention of me in a Facebook group and I feel like shit if I don't. So it's yeah. a job. I told Sean the other day, that's my friend, um, that I feel like I spend a lot of time on my phone responding to people, making connections with people because it's part of the job. It's yeah. part of the business. I like doing it. It's, it's oh, a lot yeah. of fun and I get to meet a hell of a lot of people. I can't ima- tell you how many Interesting, smart, funny, cool people I've met since becoming part of the community, but it's work. It's a lot of work. At the yeah. end of the day, I, I tend to look at it like customer <coughs> customer service. However, yeah. um, when I was in customer service, I was representing a company that, quite frankly, I didn't give a flying fuck about, and I had yeah. zero passion. So it was very fake. It was it was not genuine customer service. However, like you said, Roland, these are people that have the same passions as you. They have, and they're interested in su- and they're supporting your work. So, yeah. although it is customer service, and you need to approach it with the respectful nature that you would customer service, being that the customer is always right, being that I, I, you know, you never fucking talk down publicly to a reader. I don't give a fuck what they say about you. You just don't do it. Um, because you know what I'm saying, and like that, that's all gonna come together, you know. Yeah, it's like as long as you're as long as you're kind mm-hmm. of keeping your nose clean in that regard, and you're using those customer service sort of principles, and just then you're just letting your passion meld with that, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's not fake customer service, it's actually like I'm genuinely happy to fucking service you on you know and check you out on this. Um, book order or whatever it might be this question yeah. you have about a particular book so that's the cool part of it like you said yeah. it is it is a job and it is incredibly time consuming but it is but it's you, so worth it yeah and if you want to be successful yeah. that's how you it goes back to building brand that's brand building yeah. those inter, yeah. all those yeah. little can granular guys, interactions can you hear me okay yeah I feel yes. like my internet's been wonky again because i can only see daniel so just want to make sure before I start talking that you can actually hear me. Yeah, yeah. Hear me. yeah. What do you think okay. about this? I was going to say that I feel like we got to break it down even more to like the bare bones, though, talking about networking. Like we're talking about it kind of like from a business standpoint. Mm-hmm. But we also got to remember that a lot of authors, especially starting out, aren't even thinking along those lines yet. A lot of times, I mean, being an author you know being a writer it's a fucking lonely world man especially starting out i mean we all i'm sure all of us started out really lonely in the writing world i mean you don't tend to authors in general creative types don't tend to have a whole lot of friends in in the create creative world you know what i mean you tend to kind of be in your head a lot i mean especially as an author so yeah. I mean, you're out here, you're creating stuff, you don't really know how to reach out and how to network and stuff like that, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I think in networking, I think it's important to to recognize that, first of all, that it is a, a very lonely world to begin with. And, like, it's important, first of all, to, like, for authors, they might look at groups like ours or groups like the Cerberus guys, you know, who have each other, like a group of four people, you know, or for the three guys, you know, a group of our four and, you know, other groups and stuff, some of the godless you know, groups that have probably gotten together and stuff like that and, you know, form clicks and things like that. Um, 
and it might be kind of discouraging. You know, you might look around and see groups and be like, man, I'm not a part of anything like that, you know? And that can kind of, you know, knock your dick in the dirt. It might make you feel like, what the fuck? I'm not, you know, what do I need to do to like, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, well, you know, for the dudes out there. I don't know, but, <laughs> you could say clam in the but, sand for the ladies if yeah. you want, instead of dick oh. in the dirt. But you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can imagine a lot of authors out there looking at this and going like, you know, it's easy for you to say out there fucking networking. You guys are already making, you know, you're out there talking to people. You're in this already. You're already forming groups. Where does it begin? You know, first of all, I think you got to look around at some of the other authors that are out there commenting and stuff that, you know, are not part of groups already. I mean, don't I mean, it it is going to I'm not going to lie to you. It is going to be kind of hard to try to jump right into like a group like ours or another established group and stuff and just jump in and be one of the boys and stuff. I mean, it's, it's tough because they're, we're already working together and things like that, but there are so many other authors out there that are doing, you know, going at it solo right now. And yeah. it's not difficult to form groups. I mean, physically create a group on Facebook. I mean, it's just a matter yeah. of making a couple of clicks to create an actual fucking group on Facebook. I mean, and call it, you know, my writing group or whatever. You know, and a couple of friends that you might talk to on Facebook just say, hey, man, you know, everybody else is forming groups to brainstorm with and to bounce ideas off of. You know, I I feel like we have a similar writing style. You know, I've read some of your work. I know you've read a piece of mine. You know, what do you think about, you know, just kind of joining forces just to chit chat and just to, you know, when we're stuck on something and we need, you know, to, to, to discuss some ideas and just brainstorm and shit like that. What do you think about? You know what I mean? Like, just start reaching out to some people that you know are similar or like, you know, like-minded like you. Um, you might even want to join, like, uh, I don't want to say join the HWA because they do co- they do make you um, pay fees, like annual fees and stuff. But the Horror Writers Association, you know, they have a lot of local areas, depending on where you live. They might have an actual um, uh, chapter in your area where you live, where you physically live where you might be able to actually meet up with authors in your area. Like we just created one in West Virginia. So I can actually join the West Virginia chapter on Facebook or go to actual meetings and stuff like that. Hell, join book clubs. I mean, we're authors or readers too. And there's a shit ton of Facebook book clubs. I mean, join some book clubs and find other, there there are a lot of authors that are also involved in book clubs. Yeah. Um, what is it, Horror Nerd? And uh, oh, what's yeah, the, not, what is the other group? Yeah, Andy and Brandy do horror nerds, and they do book nerds, right? Is it book nerds? Just yeah. book nerds. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they do all kinds of book club stuff going on in there. And there's a bunch of shit like that. Join them and and actually read the books with the other authors. I mean, other readers, and 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 we're talking a lot about uh, authors in this, guys. But this is the horror reader and writer podcast. I mean, there's a lot of readers listening to this too. Yeah. So readers that want to groups and stuff like that too join the book clubs and stuff like that if you also want to network and you know meet authors and things like that too but um uh publishing companies if you are in some of the smaller publishing houses use that to your advantage too because a lot of times they'll let you beta read for some of the other authors and stuff like that and let you connect with some of the authors you may not already be doing that because you are kind of a lonely silent type and stuff like that but a lot of times the publishing companies will let you, if you ask them, if they're not asking you already, if you ask them, they may let you beta read for some of the other authors. They may get you in contact with some of the other authors. You know I mean? That's definitely a good way to connect with authors. If you're in this, working in the same publishing company and stuff like that, you guys might actually be doing some signings and stuff together. Yeah. Well, I, th- I, I think it's important. I think you make a great, I, a great point though. Like, um, cause there's kind of like levels to networking, right? It's like, for example, you, you know, some people like us, like, it's not like we could just fucking go reach out to Stephen King and be like, oh, yeah, let's yeah. let's go. Let's have a group together, Steve. What do you think? Yeah. Um, but I think you, you gave a good piece of advice in saying, like, observe your surroundings. Look at other, like you said, look at other authors that you feel like, you know, take a look at their Amazon profile. How many books do they have out? How many ratings does it have? Is it kind of close to the same ballpark that you're in? And like you said, maybe this this person is sort of flying solo too, and then then maybe you can find a friend to sort of uh, bounce stuff back and forth off of. And then like that, like especially connecting with another author, because that just opens up a whole nother web of network. You know what I mean? 
Like, yeah. all, all of that knowledge that that person has, it's just you get access to that potentially too when you're sort of collaborating. And so, yeah, there's yeah. levels to it and to be conscious of because obviously, you know, you, you have to kind of create it yourself to some extent, you know? Yeah. And the one the thing, only thing I, I advise you to do, though, is sorry, Daniel, go ahead, man. It's hard because no, I can't see the face. So it's hard to even see when you're talking. <laughs> like, well, no. Here, so. um, what, what I will say to that is, I don't know, I'm trying to think about the, I forgot the fuck I'm going to say, Carter. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you go ahead. I'm all fucked up now. Go I was ahead. just going to throw in there real quick, and it's really short, but I was just going to say to also, this sounds like gee whiz, obvious information, but just please remember to try to stay as positive as possible with this. Like, it's yeah. very easy to join forces with people who have a negative fucking attitude, man. Like, mm. there's so much poison out there and so many authors who have had bad experiences and are just going to just just soil your fucking mind with just negativity. So just yeah. take the good, you know what I mean? And be careful with the authors out there that are just just miserable, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't, I'm not well, going to say any names, but somebody commented on one of my posts the other day and was just like, fucking ne- negative as hell, man, about the, the publishing industry and what's the point because Amazon just takes all your money and what's the point of even trying to publish and... I, I replied with a very positive comment the best that I could that you know, we're lucky that we even have the options that we do now. Back in the day, your option was to either hit it big like Stephen King or pay a bunch of money to a vanity publisher. That was it. At least now it's in our hands, you know? I mean, so, I mean, the guy obviously had a very bad experience and I feel for him, but just be careful with who you're aligning yourself with and stuff like that. You know, try not to let yourself get taken down. Uh, a, a negative path. Try to stay positive and keep yourself in the right mindset. Well, that that's that's that goes to our you know talking about maintaining an upstanding reputation and that being important. So it's like if you're looking at your surroundings and other authors in these various groups that you may take a part in, um, you know, obviously, like you said, if they're putting out a lot of negative material, negative comments, things that could potentially perturb readers. Um, you know, if you align yourself with somebody like that, then you'll both go down in the ship together. But if you align yourself with someone positive, then joining forces, you can help each other ascend, you know? So it's like, um, it it is important really just, um, staying away from that negativity because the readers, the people who are reading our books, they have enough fucking shit going on in their lives that they don't need to fucking hear you online whining about something. You know what I mean? They they want an escape. They yeah. want they want that that persona to be positive. And even if we are going through horrible shit, go ahead and fucking take it out in your writing. You know what I mean? Go ahead and turn that negative into a positive instead of fucking whining online because you're not going to get nowhere doing that. The one thing I remember now what I was going to say before Carver fucking so rudely interrupted me. Um. <laughs> uh, oh, I almost spit my fucking beer out. I was uh, hoping. I was hoping to get out of your nose, like that time it came out of your nose in AC. Oh yeah, no, dude, that was ill. Yeah, it was. Um, if if you're a reader and you should be a reader if you're a writer and you read something by a peer and you like it, don't be afraid to reach out to that person and just say, "Hey, I enjoyed your book." Post a review on Amazon, post a review on Goodreads. And honestly, that's how I think I got hooked up with Roland is Roland was putting out fucking um, uh, audiobook codes. And I'm like, hey, you know, I, I wouldn't mind. I'll take I'll take a listen. And I don't know if I listened to Payback as a Witch first. I think it was Payback as a Witch first. And I really liked it. So I private messaged him with a picture of my genitals. And I said, hey, what do you think of this? <laughs> I said, hey. And I was like, it's small. Yeah. <laughs> I said, oh, wait. I said, I'm sorry. That's Aaron's. I'll, I'll send you yeah. mine. <laughs> and that's how well, I got hooked up with it. Ro- <laughs> Roland's like, despite it being a cropped photo, it was still interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, I told him. I was like, hey, you know, I, I appreciate you giving me the audio book code. And I just want to let you know I really enjoyed your book. And I'm going to review it on Amazon and Goodreads. And, you know, I appreciate it. And that's kind of how things just started going. You know, that network was built. Yeah, it happened very organically. 
Um, and that's important. I see, like Carver mentioned, um, for people who are just starting out, it is a lonely and scary world, um, especially if you've never done it before. But with the right attitude and approaching people the right way, it can develop into something amazing and beautiful um, if you let it and if you handle it appropriately. Like this relationship that we have now, it started like that. Very simple, very easy, and now look what it's turned into, which in my opinion is amazing and, and great because you guys are not only great friends, but I've learned so much from you. And so in that aspect, networking for me opened up doors and opportunities because I went about it the right way. Absolutely, and it's awesome because you you see like we've like a lot of us have been in books or we all will be in books together in the near future regardless um okay. you know what I, actually no we've all definitely been in been in at least one book together some of us multiple yeah. books and um you know that's just fucking cool that it evolved into that and then like you said the friendship aspect is incredible and it's like you know it, it's just good it's just good to have good people around you and that's why, like, yeah. well, you know, I I had the idea for this show uh, originally when I approached you guys because I was getting a lot of questions um, from aspiring authors online, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I was getting sort of an overwhelming amount at different periods, and I didn't want to be that guy that kind of told people, like, I don't have time to do this. And I, think, yeah. and I was like, you know, it'd be cool if I could do a show... And I had sort of built small relationships with you guys at that time. It wasn't anything super big at that time, I don't think. Yeah. But mm -hmm. but I, I liked you all enough and respected you enough to be like, man, we could probably have a really fun time like getting together and doing this. And then when we get those questions from people, you know, we can, you know, they have a question. Well, here, we got 25 episodes up, you know, detailed yeah. episodes that you can go and check out. So it's sort of um, a time saver and hopefully doing a service to the, the horror community. But, and you know, like who knew that it would go this far? Like, I feel like yeah. I, we've, we've been doing this. Have we been doing this for a year now? Uh, it's yeah, gotta, it's yeah. gotta be, it's gotta be close. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> this is wow. what, episode 24, I think. So, yeah. So it should be, this actually should be the one year. Cause we do bi-weekly episodes. 26. There's 26. Oh, 52 man. weeks 52 weeks in a year so 26 will be right because we do 26 well, episodes and, well the first four we did them what we did one a week right so that kind of oh, yeah i don't fucking know what we'll oh that's right we did the one a week yeah. shit oh, so, like, 28 i think will be a year something like that i don't know so <laughs> smart carver and, yeah, and handsome me not so much but uh no yeah. <laughs> but we've come a long way to say that, you know, and like, and it's good. And, and, and it's interesting to look at the network that we had when this show began as to the network that we have now, it's complete, it's night and day. Yeah. yeah. And networking isn't just an online thing as well. Like guys, you know, you know, guys and gals that are authors get out there and I know, you know, the, the pandemic, everything is, is a is a real thing. People aren't doing so much in person, but the in-person events are starting to pick up again. And, you know, KillerCon is going to be in person, Scares the Cares in person. And building those personal relationships with people through physical conventions is huge because like Aaron and I did the New Jersey HorrorCon and it was great. We met a lot of cool people. We met some fucking weird people, but we met a lot of really cool people as well. And we built some you know, some relationships. I just sent Aaron some pictures the other day that a photographer took of us and I've, she's an actress and she reached out to me and said, Hey, I had these pictures of you guys. You know, I just wanted to pass them along to the you. One, the ones in the bed? Is that the, no, those are different. Those oh, are, okay. those, are right. go, those are GoPro videos. <laughs> Remember I had the harness on my head? <laughs> that's <laughs> right, that's right. And a finger oh, in my ass. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks just like your beard. It's weird. <laughs> But like, um, we, this, is, this is a person that I have never met in my life before. She stopped by the table, talked to us, was really cool, bought some books. We hung out with her and a couple of the other actors throughout the night, and I'm still talking with her. 
And she's sending me pictures and saying, hey, listen, you know, I took pictures of you guys. What do you think about these? So get out there, build your relationships. And not only that, but build your network locally. Do local events if you can. Organize uh, a signing, you know, a local signing at a library, a brewery. You know, I did one recently at a comic book shop. Reach out to your local vendors. Look at horror authors in your area, you know, within a couple hours of you and reach out to them and say, hey, listen, we're in, like Carver said, they have the HWA West Virginia. You know, he has some great authors in that area um, that I'm sure he could reach out to and organize an event and set something up for, for that group. Mm-hmm. So reach out, look around, get yourself uh, get yourself going. Yeah, What's up, I think it's important to talk about. Oh, God. Carver. Carver. I think it's important that we talk about scares the care because we haven't talked about it enough man it's coming up by the time this airs it will only be what a month and a half if that until the actual event and i've still had seen people mention on facebook they ask all the time like is that for readers too or is that just for authors because it's called scares the care author con and i think there's still that misconception that it's just for authors to go and like have a convention and meet each other and do panels and you know learn from each other and and it's absolutely for readers too i mean if you're not going to these kind of things you're missing out man i mean some of my best relationships with readers and like times that i've hung out with people and actually you know had dinner with people and met them had drinks and stuff like that and met readers and just I had a great time was at signings and conventions and things like that. I mean, you should be going, if you're an author and you're not signing, if you don't have a table and stuff like that, you should still be going to these things and meeting other authors and going and listening to the readings and, you know, sitting in on the panels and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. if you, this scares the care is April, what, 1st through the 3rd? First, yeah. And yeah. that's in Williamsburg, Virginia. Williamsburg, Virginia, there's a Facebook uh, group for it, Scares That Care Author Con, and all the information is in there. They should still have tickets. I'm sure there's still tickets for I think there's still tickets available. Yeah, I believe there's still tickets for I know the tables, tables are sold out. And tables are sold yeah. out, so authors can't go. I mean, authors can't sign at the tables. Yeah. But, I mean, the, the, the special guests and stuff that are um, – I can't remember off the top of my head who's all – on the special guest list, but I know that they have uh, some hold on, awesome special right now. guests. So Here, special guests, Grady Hendricks, Grady Hendricks, F. Paul Wilson, Haley Piper, um, S.A. Cosby, Jonathan Jans, Mary San Giovanni, Rath James White, uh, Weston Oaks, Yvonne Navarro. I mean, C.V. Hunt, uh, who's the owner of Grindhouse Press, which is a fucking Awesome, awesome press, CV, um, sorry, Anderson Prunty and Grady Hendricks. So, like, a lot of amazing that, authors. And those are just the special guests. And those are just the special guests. That's, those aren't all the signing authors that have actually paid to have a table there. No, so, there I mean, tons, you can imagine there's a shit ton of, of, stuff. of authors there, too. So, I mean, yeah. you're going to be, I'm telling you, even if you're an author... Listen to me now. Even if you are an author that does not have a fucking table, there is no reason. If you are anywhere in the vicinity of fucking Williamsburg, Virginia, there is no fucking reason for you not to go to this signing. You're losing go a, you're losing to a lot scares of the air author. I know, because it's fucking crazy to me how the word, I feel like the word is not spread, it's not spreading like the wildfire that it should, like there's still people yeah. every time I post about it, there's still people saying like, how did I not know about this or, or you know, can readers go or is it just authors, like yes, absolutely, man and authors yeah. too, because authors readers too, I mean, come hang out, come meet us, you know what I mean, like pick up some books, there's gonna be a shit ton of authors there to buy books from come See what all the hype's about. If you have never been yeah. to a convention or a signing, now's your time. Come sneak in and just, you know lay low. Come check it out as if you're a reader. Too. You don't have to tell anybody you're an author. And not only that, but hanging out. I think, like you said, like this is. I'm really excited for again the networking potential for this um, this convention. So I'm on their website right now, and there are still tickets available for a um for part, not participants for um uh readers for fans to come around and they're thirty dollars for a three-day pass to the event 
So for for thirty bucks, you can get a pass for ten dollars a day. You can come hang out and meet all these authors that I mentioned earlier. And again, like Carver was fucking. What's the What's the website? Say it just so. Um, is it easy or is it like? Yeah, it's scares that care. It's scares that care dot com. That's the, or I'm sorry, oh. scares that care dot org. Scares that care dot org, and you can go on there and the scares that care author con and charity weekend is at the top. So, like Carver ranted about moments earlier, if you're an author, <laughs> just just show up to this, get a ticket, yeah. come down, hang out. I'm sure that a lot of deals and a lot of um, networking is going to be done afterwards maybe in the hotel bar i'm not sure but i'm sure there's gonna be a lot of talking going on there might be some you know private conversations just because you don't have a table doesn't mean you shouldn't show up yeah it's just and then like i said with readers i mean there's a time for you to meet some of the authors that you love time to hang out meet other readers that are into the same kind of books that you're into I mean, it's a time to have a drink with some people, you know, like my like minds and stuff like that. Just come out and have a good time. I heard that Aaron was selling beard clippings there. So if you want to get some of Aaron's beard, you can get it there. <laughs> I'm selling I'm selling fots in a jaw too. <laughs> it's big money. I should mention also though, because this is talked about online a lot too, is um, like ride sharing and too, uh, ride sharing. A lot of times, especially in the group, people start talking about people who live in the, you know, in the same areas and stuff. Start throwing it out there that you know they're heading that direction. Does anybody want to, you know, share a ride and stuff down there? People start sharing hotel rooms, you know, things yeah. to cut costs and stuff like that for these uh, events. Yeah. So yeah, that's the, that's the kind important. of benefits of joining a like, group and stuff too. Yeah, if you find any anybody, any strangers on Facebook that you just known for like a few days. And you're and you're thinking about taking a ride, yeah. you know that there's could like, right. There's nothing like joining fellow horror fans <laughs> and sharing rooms and rides with strange horror fans. I'm sorry, Dan. Yeah, I just I'm... want to get that announcement out there. Apologize. I'm still uh, I'm still injured from uh, my rooming with Aaron, but if you guys have Facebook, which I think the majority of people have, scares that care authorcon is the page. So you go on there, request to become a member, and you'll get all the information on there. And again, like Carver said, if you want to room with somebody who you've never met before who might harvest your organs, um, <laughs> you could probably you could probably link up with someone. Uh, and Carver, right on. Roland is definitely willing to you know insert an organ into you if you're if you're willing. So, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Everybody else is taking them out. He's putting them in. Yeah. Yeah. Eric, get us back on track. Oh, okay. All right. Well, actually, we've kind of run through pretty much our entire agenda for networking. So I think really just to recap, networking is incredibly important if you're going to be an indie author uh, or an author yeah. in general, really. Let's acknowledge, you know, that there's different levels to networking, right? And people that are within your group that you may want to approach. And then I think Daniel had a great idea too with saying, you know, by reviewing books by authors and just letting them know you think it's great. And, you know, that's that's always a good way to support the author and at least let them know yeah. who you are. Um, yeah. And then, of course, uh, maintaining an upstanding reputation, not being a fucking piece of shit. You know, that's incredibly important. Very important. Very important. But, uh, you know, it sounds like simple advice. Um, but, I mean, it's a fucking cesspool out there, guys. Um, mm -hmm. And then um, lastly, you know, we want organic networking and approaches. You know, that's yeah. that's the that's the way the, the real relationships and networking are going to happen. We don't want to force it. And... Um, by attending events and things like that and making yourself visible is some great organic ways to get shit popping. So yeah. if you guys got questions about networking or any other stuff that we covered on the podcast, again, you can send them to written and read podcast at gmail.com. I get that right guys. Yes. You did for <laughs> once. For once. Mm -hmm. Written and at written and read podcast at gmail.com. And then I think, we're pretty good to roll into the author spotlight. We, or actually, you know what? We got a little time. Why don't we do one question? Pull a question, Carl. Fuck it. Pull yeah. a fucking question. I'm done with this shit. I wanted to fuck it, stupid fucking Sam. Fuck that dude. 
All right. <laughs> I'm going to. I can't wait <laughs> to watch that movie nice and just know that it's such a piece of shit. And then I come on we here and tell you how shitty it is. Together. We should all watch it together. Oh, boy, I'm, bringing, I'm bringing my feety pajamas, too, so we can watch it together. <laughs> yeah. Wow, okay. This is a long <laughs> one. All right. Fuck. Our boy, boy. Ray, Ray H. Yeah. Take my glasses off for this one. Dude, my dick just moved. You Ray. take your glasses off. <laughs> Ray, Ray said, <laughs> "I can't, I can't concentrate now." Uh, he said, "I know that you guys are all still working normal jobs. Pay the, pay, fucking pay attention. I know that you guys were all still working normal jobs when you started publishing your writing, and wondered if the very nature of what's contained in your books and stories raised eyebrows or ruffled feathers with your employers." I suppose what I'm getting at is, have any of you had any repercussion on the job because of your descriptively graphic style of writing and content? Where I live is pretty rural, and people are somewhat conservative in nature. It would be interesting to find out your your experiences. Did we answer this one before? I feel like we did one similar, if not. I think I there was something could... similar to this. Yeah. Yeah, we can recap uh, real quick. Yeah. I'll keep a, sh- a short answer. Um, in in my in my scenario. When I was working, um, I didn't tell anybody what the fuck I was doing. I wasn't using a pen name either, so it could have really got obvious pretty quickly. And then I made sure not to fucking friend anybody that I worked with like on any of my social networks. Um, mm-hmm. So I was kind of um, just hoping that it didn't get out because who the fuck knows what would have happened. But um, in the long run, it didn't hurt me. I got lucky. Um, for me... I, I had a social media before I really became an author. Um, my friends all kind of knew that I'm fucking dark and depraved, so they didn't really – it wasn't a shock to them, and I've gotten support from everyone in uh, where I work, so I've, I've had no issues with that at all. Uh, for me, um, pretty much all the girls at my job know what I write, and <laughs> they don't really um... – say anything about it or think negatively towards it. I haven't seen them change or act differently towards me. The only thing I got in trouble for was writing on company time, which is what I mostly do. But now, you finally got caught? I still don't do it. I still do it. <laughs> finally got caught. <laughs> this um, motherfucker, every time, oh, I'm writing a book at work. Like, oh, no, I, don't, I don't work for them bitches. They work for me. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. dog rolling. <laughs> I'm trying to get out of that bitch. What you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but so that's what happened for me. Um, so no major repercussions. And if I did, I don't give a fuck. No, you're a gangster. Bloody Carver. For me, for me, when I was teaching over in Panama, I kind of kept it quiet. Like I used a pen name. I They knew I wrote, but I had some books under my real name, too that I did on purpose just to have something out in case they really started digging, they'd find something and stop digging. You know what I mean? And so that was kind of how I handled that. But then even now, like now I don't care. And my boss, like I still do some day job work. I do video editing. And uh, the guy that I work for is a really good friend of mine. And he just read the maddening and and he was like, man, he's like, you were fucking sick. But he reads it and he's full of shit, but, Huh? The role in general mutilation. Like, yeah. He's just like he. He said I was just shaking my head through most of it. Just like where does he come <laughs> up with this shit? <laughs> to tell the truth, is it even but, any of their business? I mean, like, yeah, I write what the fuck I want to write. You know, this is a nine to five gig for yeah. me. I don't come in here worrying about what you think I, about me on my personal time. Not even my personal time because I write on their time. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I don't give a fuck what they think. They can find out about it. My boss, Dr. Thompson, can find out about it. Oh, and shit. I, I will fuck you up in the book if you keep fucking with me. <laughs> Yo, he's going off the handle. He's flown off the handle. Oh, this, oh, <laughs> wrangle my man. Dang, wrangle this shit. Man. Fuck Ray. you fucking touching sensitivity yeah. right now. Yeah. Roland, Roland, call yeah, him right now week. and quit. Next, quit your fucking Next show. episode, Roland's going to be like, so guys, I'm writing full time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, <laughs> thanks, Ray. You got us. We got rolling all fucking fired off here. Rolling's with the you guys want job. Another mailbag? Yeah, another mailbag, please. Do another mailbag. I feel like we answered that one or one really similar to that one before. Yeah. Really aggressively. Yeah. All right. Hendrick asked. Oh, okay. In what order is a book usually produced from beginning to end? Example, writing, editing, proofreading, cover design, interior design, formatting, release. <laughs> Mm. So just go back to episode one. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, not not necessarily because there there, is, <laughs> there there but there are some books for. So I'll give you an, uh, now, for instance, like the for Talia, I had the cover of Talia done before I wrote the book oh, yeah. because I knew what I wanted that book to cover to be. So I I don't know if maybe I was uh, partially into the book, but I knew what I wanted already. So. In that instance, I did get the cover first. And I've seen people that buy covers, uh, like pre-made covers, preemptively because they have an idea and they see this cover out there and they get it done. Or some people will have a cover commissioned because they feel like it will give them um, inspiration because like, oh, I already spent a couple hundred dollars on a cover. I better get the book done. So I think it goes down to personal yeah. preference and the book itself. Sometimes I've written entire books and I have not had a title for it until the end. So I think for for Hendrick, you know, if you have a cover that you really love and you want to craft a story around it, go for it. Yeah. Good call. Um, yeah, but I think for most the most part a lot of that content is covered in our earlier episodes as far as like our process. So maybe yeah. maybe we won't rehash it all again, but I think that's a good anomaly that you pointed out. Maybe we could do one more question since that was a quick one. Yeah. Grab one yeah, more and cover. I was just kind of joking, being like, I know it sounded like I was being a smartass. I was just joking, but he, this you're, question you're was fucking put in prick, there, dude. like, you're, you're, no, you're, 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 this you're was one of, of the shit. first original <laughs> questions. So this was back there before we even really got into any of the episodes. Was it handwritten when but, you um, wouldn't buy fucking printer ink? For fucking <laughs> eight months. No, this was, this was, this was printed before I ran out of printer ink. <laughs> oh my god, that's, oh, that's the OG question. <laughs> <laughs> it was chiseled into stone back when the fucking <laughs> dinosaurs were still. <laughs> Hieroglyphics. Okay, hold on. I'm trying. Come on, Carver. <laughs> well, I keep pulling ones out that I think are pretty much the same. Give us, give us a good one for All Christ's right, sake. Joe Young. Joe always has great questions. Joe I'm Young. excited. Yeah, Joe always has good questions. Uh, he said. Hendrick had a great question, too. He did. Read the <laughs> fucking question. Hey, you're a fucking asshole. You made it sound like Hendrick didn't have a good question. I had a great Just question. Just point that out. <laughs> you're, you're the fucking one that told him to go back to episode two. Yeah, you fucking douche. taking my fucking glasses off for this one, too. It's uh, a lot of turmoil. Joe Young said you're offered $10,000 from a publisher for your personal best work, but... You must give up all rights to that work forever. Would you take the deal? For my best $10, work? $10,000 for your best work, but you must give up all rights to that work forever. Well, I hate to say it, but my best work has already grossed more than that, so no. Nice. Awesome. So, what about you, Daniel? Yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do it either because there's so much potential for things. Yeah. I don't like selling rights to anything ever no, unless it that. is like fucking seven digits, you know, like life changing money. Like 10 grand is, you yeah. know, to some people a fucking a, a paycheck or a month salary. Like, you, you know, I'm not going to sit there and sell something that could potentially make me, you know, significant amounts of money later on for, yeah. you know, 10 grand. That's yeah. what I'm saying, dude. It's like bet on yourself. Like not enough yeah. people fucking bet on themselves. And it's like. If you bet on yourself, the and that's what's that's what we do here and talk about the show, right? It's self publishing. It's like you're betting on your, yourself, and and when that that payoff may be elusive, but when it comes, it's gonna it's gonna come that much harder. Come right in your face, like you don't even see it coming, <laughs> and it just smashes you right in just the face. Fucking like no tons of fucking like, success it's, all over your face. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just in your eyes. It's maybe it up your burns nose. Burns gonna get in your eye, Carver. It burns. Yeah, that success burning your retinas. But I, de <laughs> I, 
I definitely wouldn't though. I, I don't think it's I, I don't think it's a good move. You know, I mean, you know, if 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 you're in this business right. for a cash grab, I guess. But if you actually like passionate about your work, yeah. I, I don't see how you could do it. You know. Yeah. yeah. That's why I could never be a ghost writer, man, because that's what they do essentially. You know, they write their they write these books. Yeah. I know somebody who's who's a ghost writer, and that was the question I asked. I said, "What happens if you wrote the next fucking Harry Potter? It just happened to be a fluke. You sold it to somebody for, you know, a thousand bucks or whatever, because she's not selling them for ten grand. You know, let's say a thousand. She sells her book for a thousand bucks to somebody. They turn around, make a you know, tweak it or whatever they do to it, and then it becomes the next Harry Potter." Yeah. Wouldn't you fucking want to shoot yourself? I mean, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. and she was yeah. like, she's like, no, because I just once it's gone out the door, I just forget about it. And it was like, you say that now, but you, you, you know what you wrote. I mean, you right. know, you, you know, and if that suddenly showed up on the screen and you're like, holy shit, that's the story I wrote. And it's the next oh, Harry Potter. It's... Yeah, no. I mean, come on. Yeah. That would be hard that's to actually... swallow, man. Just... Imagine me selling abortion for ten thousand dollars, and then I get a call from Jordan Peele, and he wants to make it into the next reimagining of It's Alive. Yo, oh, you need to hit him up. Hit him up right Yo, now. Yo, holla at him. Already done. For real. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh, uh, <laughs> my man, make it fucking move. Uh, you know what? I honestly did that. You never know. Shit, you don't. If you don't put yourself out there, if you don't bet on yourself, like Aaron said, you never know what'll happen. You never That's know. the thing. The worst case I may tell you is, you know, no, or go fuck yourself. Yeah. Which we've all been or told that it. so many times. It's like I'm like immune yeah. to it, you know. Like today, today we've probably said it to each other. <laughs> I don't. You know what, Daniel? I don't know if I said, it, said to it. So to go. Me, so sure. go fuck yourself, bud. All right. Yeah. Why don't you all go fuck yourself? Especially. You know what, Roland? Why don't you all fucking... come fuck me? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I just Yo. I'm so sorry, guy. No, Roland, feel... Roland wants to be on a rotisserie. He wants us to be organ donors. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> we wanted you to be on your best behavior until it scares that care. Then you're going to get that payoff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you just got to hold out. <laughs> I get it. You got to hold out. You got to be on your wobbly H. <laughs> uh, well, I, I mean, we we probably have time for one more question, honestly, because right. we kind of wrapped Get up one the network. More. And last one, and then we'll do our reader recognition, and we'll be out. All right. Let's see. This was when the printer was broken because I hand wrote this one. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> this is from Donna. Hey, Donna. Oh, we love you, Donna. Apparently, I had a pass on this one because the first words are besides Carver. <laughs> Yo. Fuck you, Carver. Besides Carver. <laughs> do any of you think that there might be a possibility you'd write a non horror oh, okay, never mind. A non horror book in the future? Would you try just to see if if you could? Mm. Yes. I would do yes. fantasy. Why are yeah, you I... why are you fucking licking your lips when you're giving that answer? Car rolling? No, you, <laughs> motherfucker. I just see oh, you. Yeah. You fucking diddling yeah. around your lips and shit. Yeah. You know, I you're would like, write something else. Yeah, like, mm, I'll write that. <laughs> what are you going to write? <laughs> my finger in my mouth. I would write everything. <laughs> everything? I, I, I would, what the I would fuck? write. If I was going to write another genre, I wouldn't use my real name. I wouldn't use the, uh, the Daniel J. Volpe name. If I was going to write something like some erotica, yeah. I would definitely throw in a, a, a pen name. Um, if I was going to really cross genres, like if I was going to write sci-fi, like pure sci-fi, I'd probably use a pen name. But if it's going to be like any blend of horror, like a fantasy horror or something like that, I would just stick with my name. But yeah, I don't right. give a fuck. I've written other books before. They're just not published because they suck, but that are not horror. They're steampunk and fantasy and all that shit. So. What about you, Aaron? Uh, for me, I mean, um, I wouldn't... Uh, I could potentially – I've dabbled in, like, sci-fi horror, but it's always connected to horror still. Never, yeah. ju never just, like, a pure sci-fi. Um, but more, even way more than, than sci-fi, I would definitely – I love crime. Um, so, like, yellow is still horror crime. I would still say there's horror elements in it. But I have, okay. pl I have plans to um, write books that are more crime-related, I think. 
not pure, but but there's the thing is, it's still gonna have some crazy shit going on in it when things pop yeah. off. Um, but I think it's it's arguable that certain short stories that I've written could be considered crime, like like Beyond Reform, for example. That that in some ways I think that could be considered like like a crime story, you know. But, but yeah, those are my those are my main two. What about you? Um, I would probably take a stab at fantasy. Uh, I've always loved fantasy. Like that's why I, I started reading fantasy. Like um, uh, the Zant series by what's his name Pierce Anthony. Pierce and, Anthony. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's so good. Hmm. And um, uh, Simon R. Green. So I started actually reading horror, uh, sci-fi before or fantasy before I got into horror. Uh, so I would probably take a stab at fantasy. You know what? I want to make one amendment too. Is that I wrote an essay um, for my latest book, Modern Hysteria, that's not out yet, but um, and um, I've written very short true crime pieces too before, like you know, page synopsises like of nonfiction true crime sh- stuff. Um, I would potentially consider writing like a true crime or oddities sort of thing as well. Um, and maybe even possibly humor to some to some extent, but that's probably not for a long time. That kind yeah. of stuff, you know. I need to really like. I feel like I need to really build myself up and and be very comfortable with where I am. Then I might take some time, you know, to really explore different different stuff. But the crime blends in so well with horror that I I don't I'm not I don't feel like that's that much of a leap. So I'm very comfortable doing that still. You know. Yeah. Nice. But Carver, um, what what about you? Uh, do you have like other? Uh, I know she wanted to exclude you specifically from this because you're a piece of <laughs> shit that should go fuck yeah. himself. But I Accurate. think I think um, I, I'm interested to know if do, is there any other stuff that you haven't made our readers aware that you write that you'd be interested in writing? Well, first of all, I am going to say that. I'm just, I was just messing around with Donna. Donna just finished my third big MC Motorcycle Club book. I mean, and those are not easy books. Those are thick books. I mean, so. Yeah, don't she, you fucking I dare disrespect awesome, Donna. So I was just fucking around with her, but she's awesome, man. Honestly, um, you'd have to be a but, fucking idiot to disrespect Donna. Yeah, you'll get cut if yeah. you disrespect Donna. <laughs> so, uh, I would like to, well, like you said, is there anything I've written that I haven't? I mean, I've pretty much mentioned, I think, everything that I've written because Edge of Reflection is my dark fantasy series, and that's under Carver Pike. And then I have all my romance stuff. But I, I love the, the dark fantasy. What would you call, like, the movie Sin City? Like, I love that kind of shit where it's that's not. Noir. It's, it's that's noir. Kind of, yeah. Noir. Noir. Yeah. But you know how it's got this fucking, like, it's got the different, like, how the villains are all, all creatures and shit, too, kind of. It's got those fucking weird ass, like. Yeah. Well, like, Dick, like, Dick uh, Tracy's kind of like that, but I was I just like this badass fucking more. sick psycho villains and shit like that. I mean, so I've got some dark fantasy type ideas along, you know, in that, along the, that realm, I guess. So, and I can definitely see myself writing some sci fi horror. Um, I think it will mostly all be still in the vein of horror, though. I mean, in some way, but definitely dark fantasy and sci-fi in the cool. future. I wish there was just more fucking time in the day, man. I, I need like that Michael Keaton multiplicity where he just created different, you know, more versions of himself. And I want to that... like create one to write dark fantasy, one to write fucking sci-fi, one to write romance, one to write horror, and just let him have at it. And then, like in you the e- in the evenings, just a big circle jerk, right? Yeah, like a human yeah. centipede that yeah. you talked about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like a giant carver pike centipede. <laughs> All right, thank you for the question, Donna. If anyone else watching the show has any other questions, feel free to send those over to written and read podcast at gmail dot com, and we will try to keep pulling questions. Um, you know what, guys? We should probably do like an all question episode because we have a lot of questions. Yeah, we did one not that long ago. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, I think we need another one soon. Oh, it might be time. Yeah. Send in the questions, guys. If we get send us questions, you yeah. know, if we get fucking. Yeah, we haven't had a lot recently, so. Yeah, 
I'm looking to get. Oh, there was a couple. We have that a came lot. In it, recently, we still but, have a lot yeah. in the mailbag, but we haven't had a lot of recent ones come in. I'm saying. Yeah. Good point. So. Uh, now, Daniel, you were going to be presenting the reader recognition today, right? Um, yeah. So this is a, a guy that reached out to me not long ago. He is a a reader and just kind of I would kind of almost consider him like a super fan because this guy he goes out of his way to reach out to the authors, to talk to the authors, to re- obviously read our books, leave reviews, and th- that is my man, Joel Velasquez. Uh, Joel! Joel has done – Joel has been an amazing fucking guy. Uh, I think he's he bought everything from me, signed copies. Not only that, but he did a giveaway because he, he, he bought one of my books on Amazon and decided he wanted to get a signed copy straight from me. So he gave that book away – and bought a signed copy for me. So not only is he a great reader, but he's a great supporter of indie horror. Um, we've had some really cool chats, not even about horror, just about our personal hobbies, um, some family stuff, uh, business stuff in general. And Joel, man, I appreciate the shit out of you. You know, I appreciate what you do for indie horror and your support is, you know, is just, is just great. And, you know, keep it up, man. And we'll, we'll keep writing this sick shit if you keep reading it. Aaron, want, you've had some interactions with him too, right? Yeah, he's fucking awesome, man. Joel, thank you. Just want to say we appreciate you. Joel went out of his way and reached out to me, bought every single book, except so sorry, Daniel, because I think he got that one from you. Um, he did. But he still bought every single book regardless. And, um, I mean, that's just incredible when somebody's, like, willing to go all in on your shit right away. And, um, you know, again, that's that's – this episode's about networking and it's, and it's really because, you know, he discovered Daniel and then he noticed that Daniel had done a book with me and happened to inquire with, uh, Daniel about other authors. And, um, you know, that's how networking can, can work, you know? And, um, we want to thank, thank Joel though. Cause I mean, dude, anybody who just buys everything, it's just, that's the ultimate commitment and saying like, they have no doubt that they're going to enjoy it. And so far he's posted, I think two reviews of books. I mean, he's just fucking tearing through them. Like this oh, guy, yeah. this guy is just a beast of a reader. And <laughs> like you see, he just puts up really cool <clears throat> reviews online, shares with everybody and he's helping us out, you know, and he might not even realize it, but he really is helping us out. So thank you, Joel. Well, I see he's from New Orleans, Louisiana. What's up, Joel? We do. <laughs> um, I, I haven't had any interactions with him yet, but he's from New Orleans, so he's fucking badass, I'm sure. Uh, but it is in my friend request, so Joel, friend me on Facebook, looking forward to getting to know you. Um, Harbor, do you know him? Oh, I also just sent him a friend request just based on you guys. I knew you yeah. guys were going to talk about him tonight, and I haven't had any interaction with him, so I sent him a request too, so. Awesome. Oh, yeah. You can't go wrong with him. He's he's a good dude. You guys all you guys all like the interactions with him, and yes. with what Aaron said, with him buying all of our stuff is yes, he likes he likes the indie horror. But again, this goes back to him um, wagering on us. You know, he yeah. likes us as people, and he decided I want to support these people, and I'm going to take a shot, and I'm going to buy all of their stuff. So, you know that that's just a that's a huge move, and we we really appreciate it. Awesome. Absolutely, absolutely. Well-deserved reader recognition, Joel. We appreciate you. Thanks for being a true horror fan. And everybody else, um, remember, we are the Written and Read podcast. You can subscribe to us on YouTube, um, on Spotify, on iTunes, all that good stuff. Um, my name's Aaron Beauregard, and you can uh, reach out to me on Facebook or whatever social media platform. And I'm happy to uh, fill orders for signed copies. All my stuff's on Amazon. And remember, I got Nightmare Nirvana and Modern Hysteria coming out in the future. Uh, Daniel, what do you got? Uh, Daniel J. Volpe. You guys can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Uh, email DanielJVolpeHorror at gmail.com. You know, all my books I have signed, personalized copies if you guys want them. Some cool swag to go with it. Uh, feel free to shoot me a private message. Facebook's my preferred method, so that's going to be your your best bet. And um yeah, thank you, everyone, for the support. I really appreciate it. Raw Dog. 
Hey, Roland Bercy Jr. Um, guys, just hit me up. I'm on Facebook. Uh, I have Instagram. I never really use it, though. Uh, but if you send me a message, I will. Um, you can also find my stuff at RolandBerseyJr.com and on Amazon. Carver. I'm on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, Substack is where my newsletter is. Everything under Carver Pike. That's where you find me. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Nice. I never know what to say at the end of that. Yeah, you're the I like going with. I like a great <laughs> job. <laughs> well, so there. <laughs> well, again, guys, uh, we want to thank everyone for watching or listening. We are the Written and Red podcast. And remember, we're going to be at Scares That Care. Uh, the author con that is also for readers so please readers definitely come we're looking forward to saying hi to everybody and yes. who know, we may also have a secret project that the four of us are involved in oh, shit. Um, that who knows if, if the stars align it might be available by then but regardless it's coming it's coming all over everyone all over <laughs> again uh until next time keep it 100 percent horror <laughs>